So admittedly, guys, I have rather tasteless taste when it comes to watches sometimes. I know sometimes we share an affinity for specific models. We can, we can both get very excited about whatever a particular brand has brought to the table. But oftentimes I find myself drawn to watches that are not popular, that are not well received, that really lie in the periphery of the watch market. And this is one of those models. I absolutely adore everything about this Breitling Premier Detora 42, which has its origins back in the 1940s. Detora in Breitling speak refers to a complete calendar chronograph. So you will notice day, date, month, moon phase, in addition to time, subsidiary seconds, and a 30 minute chronograph uh, counter here as far as the complications go. Now the movement is based on the Concepto 2822 caliber. It will have 26 joules, beat at four hertz, and have roughly 48 hours of power reserve. This is a column wheel chronograph, and we do have a chronometer certification very tasteful finishing, a rapid cycle set pointer date and moon phase accessed through the crown at the three o'clock position, which is a push-pull crown and carries twin gaskets and 100 meters of water resistance. Breitling calls this the B25 movement, so it would be considered an in-house movement even though it's concepto-based, so it will qualify for the five-year warranty with the additional two years option for the extension. I absolutely love the incredible detail work at play on this beautiful copper dial. I love the triple step apertures for your day and month. I love the sunken sub registers with the faint concentric circle guilloche texturing. I love the polished applied Arabic markers and the heat blued needle sub register hands and running chronograph hand. Notice the old style font, the open sixes and nines. And one detail that I, I don't know, really appreciate, it's a small silly detail, but I like seeing that classic faced moon. Sometimes on a moon phase, you'll just get, you know, a polished disc or something, but this has the classic face. And I think that's, oh, I think that's awesome. So going to the case, very sharp case lines, recessed lines on the side, of the stainless steel case with gold bar form function pushers for a lot of real estate and grip for your fingers to engage with. The actuation is butter smooth, very crisp with that column wheel chronograph, very satisfying to use, absolutely indicative of the price segment. And I like the fact that this has a proud cambered sapphire crystal with lovely dual applied anti-reflective treatment. That treatment is on the top of the crystal as well as the underside of the crystal. And I will say like most Breitling models, the anti-reflective treatment does a fantastic job of reducing reflections and enhancing clarity, which is very important in my opinion. When you have such an intricate, full, classically beautiful dial, I like seeing that clarity. And I do like seeing that iridescent blue sheen that you'll notice from direct reflections from light sources. Now onto the size, I think a lot of you are going, Bruce, yeah, that's cool, that's nice, but it's so big. It's 42 millimeters in diameter with a 50 millimeter lug to lug dimension, 15.3 millimeters in case height to the top of that cambered proud sapphire crystal. And then this watch will have 22 millimeter lugs, 110 gram weight, and will again have 100 meters of water resistance. Now let's get to the kicker here. $13,500 full retail, which is a steep retail price. I know we're getting a nice combination of complications. It's classically done. The fit and finish is here. The detail work is present. Uh, I know that, but at the same time, there are other watches that I would rather spend $13,500 on. But fortunately for me as a consumer, you can find steep discounts on the secondary market. I've noticed a couple different examples, mint pre-owned going for about 30 to 35% off full retail, but there are not a lot of examples on the secondary market. This is not a popular model. There is not a lot of demand for this particular piece, which is good for me because I want this. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I kind of am drawn toward those periphery watches that I can get super excited about, 
but very few other people will do the same thing. To me, this is so alluring. This is brightling perfection if it was on the bracelet. Now, that being said, you can take this off of the brown alligator strap and it will, or at least I was told at the Breitling Boutique in New York City in uh, the, uh, what's it called, the Oculus, uh, I was told that the standard Premier bracelet from their chronograph is compatible on this Detora 42. So what I would like to do, and I'm really exploring the idea here of flipping a few of my lovely pieces and buying one of these Detora 42s, hopefully on the secondary market at a steep discount of around 30%. I think if I do that and then I add the bracelet from a Breitling authorized dealer, which unfortunately is rather steep at $1,200, I could be in this under 10 grand. And considering the detail work, considering the movement, considering the emotion that this incites in me as a watch enthusiast, that's a no-brainer, even though a lot of you that are still watching this at this moment are probably scratching your head and going, Bruce, don't, don't do this. This is not going to end well for you. And uh, to you, I have to say, I will at some point. The question is, when?